fascinating. So very fascinating. I arrived, hooded, jar hiding just under my cloak. The guard wouldn't let me through, but James opened the door. He knew that I had been watching, and he's been watching me. He let me in. It is strange being face to face with a man that so many fear. He isn't full of muscle. He isn't scrawny either. He can handle himself fine enough if need be, but he is definitely one of those power is in the mind types. The guard followed behind. I assumed to make sure he can grab my arms if I had pulled a gun or something, but James retreated to the front of his desk. All in a calm stride, he turned and leaned against it. I enjoyed watching the way he moved. Everything seemed so precise. Like he's already thought of where he'll sit, how he'll stand. Everything is by design and everything is fluid. I began to feel my nerves, but I did my best not to show it. His voice was catching. You'd never expect a deep octave to come out of his mouth as he asked what he could do for me. Before I said a word, he looked as though he just remembered something. Motioning to his guard behind me, I felt a slight tug on my head, and my hood was pulled down. Much better, he said with a slight smile, lifting his hand as an invitation for me to continue. So I began my practice speech. I'm sure you've seen me around by now. Our paths cross quite a bit, Mr. Alshur. He didn't respond, only tilted his ear up to listen. Curiosity slightly peaked. I held up the jar with the eye in it, stretching it out, an invitation for him to have. Curiosity dropped into confusion. He opened his mouth to speak, but I interrupted before he could turn it away. A present, you see. I met a woman the other day. A fascinating lady. Your Julius. His head tilted back again. Curiosity redeemed. I thought you'd like to know she had a lot to say about you. A lot to say about your work. Now, I've been in her position before, and spillage is never good. We both know this, and well, you see, Mr. Alisher, I can't lie, I'm quite taken with you. I couldn't help but watch you these past few days, your intellect, your prowess. I forced a smile. I couldn't bear the thought of someone so close being the one to hurt you, so the spilling of secrets, it's dirtier than the business. I would know. You wouldn't guess it, but I've lived in her shoes. As someone who's been there, I was disgusted by her betrayal, so I thought, what better way to apologize for following you than giving you a little present, saving a man of your status the time and the hassle of dealing with it yourself. He said nothing as his eyes narrowed at me. I could tell his mind was racing. Thinking of just what she did or didn't say, probably thinking of just how to kill me. Maybe the man did love his wife. From what she told me though, I doubt it. My stomach began twisting, but I know men like him well enough, ego. Inflate their ego and they'll love every second of it. But only in genuine compliments. Kiss ass, but mean every word of it. Let them do the work of interpretation. See, I actually am very taken by him. Not 
and desire, but intrigue. He's someone who, by all appearances, should not be able to hold a gang of his magnitude. He's not a mouse, not a dog, or a snake. I haven't quite figured out where he lands in the pecking order. Where does his power come from? Is he all talk, able to manipulate the minds around, or is he more? Is he better at fighting than he lets on? Who is he? Before I knew it, Elsher was in front of me. He grabbed the jar from my hands, turning it and holding it up to the light. A slight smile grew along his thin face as he studied the eye. And in mere moments, the jar was flown across the room, shattering on impact with the wall. My heart just about jumped out of my chest. I mean, I expected some kind of reaction, but the look on his face... I wasn't prepared for the breaking of glass. He turned and grabbed me by the throat. And he began to study my face. My eyes... My breathing quickened, no matter how I tried to steady it. And I could see his eyes focusing in on my scar, tracing the outline of it interrupting my brow, down to the lid, and through to my cheek. The smile returned ever so slightly. He asked in a clear, commanding voice, is she dead? I struggled, but shook my head, keeping contact with his eyes. There is no doubt that he could tell that I was shaking, but I wouldn't let it break through to my face. His grip tightened slightly. So you started, but couldn't finish, he said. I grabbed his arm with my hands and smiling as my eyes traced down his arm back up to his eyes, a look of slight confusion for a mere second, and then he let go. I began to chuckle slightly. That makes two of us now, doesn't it? He turned, walking over to the eye, gently stooping down to pick it up, studying it yet again, acceptance given in the form of a nod. I was taken aback that he was engrossed out by the feeling. I don't think I ever truly got over it. He handled it gently. Maybe instinct. Maybe he's done it before. My smile fell when his eyes were off me. He asked where Julie was. I didn't answer. He pulled his gun, pointing it my way, and asked again. But all I could think was, hello, death, my old friend. Is it my turn now? I didn't realize it right away, but he had begun studying my face again, and he smirked, giving me a slight nod before lowering his gun again. I began to feel fear when he finally did speak again. Philip. Show Lachlan out, would you? Lachlan. He knew my name already. He knew more than I thought he did. Well, fuck. 